Barack and I were raised with so many of the same values. Like, you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, that you do what you say you're going to do. My parents impressed on me the values that you work hard for what you want in life. That your word is your bond, and you do what you say and keep your promise. That you treat people with dignity and respect, even if you don't know them, and even if you don't agree with them. That you treat people with respect. They thought and showed me values and morals in their daily life. That is a lesson that I continue to pass along to our son. And we need to pass those lessons on to the many generations to follow. And Barack and I set out to build lives guided by these values and to pass them on to the next generation because we want our children and all children in this nation to know that the only limit to the height of your achievements is the reach of your dreams and your willingness to work hard for them. Because... Because we want our children in this nation to know that the only limit to your achievements is the strength of your dreams and your willingness to work for them. Welcome to the Brooklyn Teddy Podcast. Wait, who's Brooklyn Teddy? Oh yeah, he's just a Brooklyn guy with a wife, a kid, tattoos, and a podcast. Trying to figure it out and enjoy life. Welcome to the Brooklyn Teddy Podcast. All right, everybody. Hey, this is Brooklyn Teddy here. Episode number 98. Yes, that was the uh, the post... <laughs> I guess it's all over the news now. You know, the Melania's uh, supposed plagiarism of Michelle Obama's speech at the 2008 uh, Democratic Convention. I don't know, man. This is this is just uh, <laughs> the whole thing is, I don't know, it's so surreal. It's something, I don't know. It was like the, the great quote from George Carlin. <laughs> I got a front row ticket to the freak show. Baby, well, that baby part is the Brooklyn Tay thing. I don't know. You uh, you can watch that little uh, excerpt of uh, Melania on YouTube. Of course, I'll put up a link there uh, on BrooklynTay dot com, and it's just it's it's embarrassing, <laughs> fucking hilarious. But I don't know what's going on. It's surreal. Um, and Donald Trump has recently uh, 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 bo- onboarded uh, Amorosa. <laughs> what the fuck is going on, America? This is. This is absurd. Yeah, so yeah, Spike Lee is all upset about that. I don't know. Um, just try digesting all this nonsense uh, little piece by piece because, I, you know, I, I was going to watch the whole Republic. I, I couldn't. My stomach started turning. Uh, I don't know. The, the dog hit under the bed. My son started crying. I don't know. It was just ridiculous. I couldn't, I couldn't go through with it. But decided to... Uh, you know, uh, just check in and see what's going on. So, yeah, so that hit the news there. And um, then uh, Chachi, what the fuck, Chach? Blah, 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 blah. What happened, man? What? I, what? what? And and the constant, the constant reminder of fear. America has fear. We're so scared. Fear, fear. Yeah, we're fearing that Donald Trump becomes president. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Then um, the awesome Duck Dynasty guy comes up, and of course he tries to draw the line that somehow the supporters of Donald Trump are, you know, real folk. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? (laughs) Donald Trump will kick you out of one of his casinos if he didn't know who the fuck you were. Look at you, man. Nothing wrong with that. That beard is pretty sweet, though. (laughs) Came up there, up in Dan. You know, it's, it's just, I don't know. This is... This is theater of the insanity. This is what this is insane. What the fuck is going on? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, on the second night there, I caught a little bit of that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. The, the Giuliani speech. What was that? What was that? No, uh, listen, New York, you know what's up. All right. I don't know. 
supposedly Rudy Giuliani cleaned up New York. Bullshit, man. Listen, you know what he did? He fucked it up for small businesses, all right? He cleaned, I guess he did clean up for a certain amount, but in what way? In what respect? Just, uh, just, uh, and, and, listen, whatever. Listen, I can't get on that. And of course, his speech, uh, I don't know, did anybody, I should take a tally. I can't do it. I don't have time for that shit, but someone should take a tally. One of you uh, journalist blogger fucks out there, you should do a tally of how many times the word fear came up. Fear, fear, fear. We're in fear of fear because fear, 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 fear. So, yeah, just keep you constantly scared, man. Scared, scared. I'm so scared. <clears throat> and sorry. And then Chachi comes out. What the fuck, man? Dude, what happened? Hey. Uh, I don't know what the Henry the Fonz is. <laughs> Political things are. I hope it's not with Trump. I don't know, but uh, Hillary should get the Fonz to show up. Hey, <laughs> I don't know. Just keep the insanity going, you know. Little Chachi gets up there, and you know, I, I like Scott Bale. You know, I like the goofy character on Happy Days and blah blah blah. And now he's over here. What? What happened, man? What happened? Hmm. Chachi loves Trump. Very sad. Very 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 sad. <laughs> <laughs> and hilarious at the same time. I don't know. And then what was the second night there? Uh, old um, sugar addicted Christie. I mean, I feel bad for him. You saw him walking out there. And listen, uh, I'm not here going to fat shame this guy, but this guy can't control what he puts in his mouth. And he, I, it just, it's just. Obs- and listen, don't, 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 don't uh, give me a frowny face or whatever. Listen, I'm a fat fuck too, all right? Uh, but I'm working on it. I'm working. No bypass surgery. I ain't eating no fucking M&Ms, all right? But anyway, he went out there and did his shtick, uh, you know, the attorney. And listen, I am no clear fan of uh, Hillary Clinton, but uh, this is, I don't know, this is all absurd. The whole thing, it's a, it's, a, it's a theater of the absurd right before your very eyes, ladies and gentlemen. And these are the people, the rule makers, the governors, the, the deciders of policies that, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't even know how to digest this. I don't know. But it just keeps going on and on. It's just... I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. What what are you gonna do? Are, are you are you a Trump supporter? You think Donald Trump, the billionaire who got his money pretty much from his daddy, uh, and oh yeah, he took one million. No, no, no. Just look a little deeper. Go find. Just, listen, he's a rich kid. Okay, my daddy couldn't leave me no fucking million dollars. Could he leave you a million dollars? Or whatever he said, or whatever number it was. You know, come on, man. Listen, listen. And for all you Brooklyn people, you know Fred Trump, right? Fred Trump is the one who destroyed the steeplechase over there at Coney Island, took that shit down to put up those buildings. <laughs> the Trump Towers, yeah. I've lived with the name Trump my whole life, pretty much, living in Brighton Beach and Trump Tower, Trump Tower. I don't know. The whole thing just, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Am I dreaming? Can, can somebody pinch me? <laughs> well, ladies, we'll see how this all plays out in the end there. I don't know. Um. If whatever way you want to, I don't know what you do to pacify yourself, pray, meditate, yoga, do push-ups, stand on your head, whatever you got to do. I don't know. I don't know how you're digesting this. And to have all this stuff just like the wool passed over your eye. (laughs) And listen, uh, once once a friend of mine, because, of course, you know, when I was younger, of course, you know, now you're older, you kind of latch on to this stuff, you pay more attention and this and that. I mean, I grew up in the good old um, Ronald Reagan. He's all man. <laughs> Ronnie can't do it. And nobody can. And that was fucking hell era <laughs> right there. And it was all fear. Remember Star Wars and the missile control thing that he, I don't know what the fuck he wanted to do. But anyway, and it was like, now we had the, you know, Red Dawn. You know, the Russians are coming. The Russians are coming. And now we have, I don't, is Melania Russian? <laughs> giving a speech at the I don't understand what's going on. <laughs> uh, but she did look fabulous, didn't she? Uh, in that really super duper, I don't know how million, million dollar dress and all that plastic surgery. Uh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Am I going crazy? Am I going nuts? Uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I got a little cough. This way early in the morning. I usually don't do podcasts this early in the morning. Um, 
kind of uh, bright and early at six o'clock in the morning. I rolled up here and said, you know what, man, let me just go peruse some of this nonsense. And then, yeah, of course, I got a little sick to my stomach. <laughs> so I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how this plays out. Uh, you know, hit me up on Twitter. You know, Brooklyn Teddy thirteen, uh, good old Twitter there. If you want to, you know, you can say, oh, "Teddy, you asshole." You know, I love Trump. Trump is the best. <laughs> and, and I don't know how. Why would you think this? I don't know. We're gonna build a wall. Uh, what? I don't know. I don't know what you guys expect. Whatever it's gonna be is the most be the most fucked up reality show ever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so hit me up on Twitter there. Head on over to brooklynteddy.com. You know, uh, the companion website, I'll put some information there. Uh, I load up some of the videos that I talk about so you can peruse. And uh, feel free. I, you know, I don't care. I, you can say whatever you want. You know, listen, I don't care. You know, agree with me, disagree, laugh along with me. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. I really think, uh, I don't know, we've come unhinged. I don't, <laughs> just everybody thinks just seems way off kilter, you know? And all the horrible stuff going on the news and compounded. I think everybody should just shut their fucking televisions, <laughs> put down their fucking phones, I don't know, stand in a corner and fucking drool for five years, and maybe, maybe things will get a little bit. I don't know, but <laughs> it's just compounded media on top of it. It's just on and on and on and on. And I think basically that's probably the best didn't do, you know? I'm going to shut everything off after this podcast. <laughs> of course, I have to listen to Brook and Teddy podcast too, make sure you know, I didn't fuck up the audio. I don't know, was something wrong with the audio last time, ladies and gentlemen? I don't know, there was something going on. I could hear it. I heard I listed on different uh, things. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if it was the server. I don't know if it was something that happened here. But I apologize if there was any clicks or anybody who downloaded that and listened. And thank you. Thank you if you did. And don't forget... Uh, would be greatly appreciated if you can head over to iTunes. Yeah, I know the other corporate months. But anyway, head on over to iTunes uh, and subscribe if you haven't and write a little review. Uh, you know, whatever you want. You know, but at least give me a give me a at least give me five stars and then curse me out. I don't care. <laughs> so uh, I don't know. I'm exasperated. I'm exhausted. I don't know. Uh, and that opening, the Donald Trump, he popped out like, what was that, man? What the fuck was that? <laughs> that guy's really fucking ego fucking maniac. Ego fucking maniac. I guess, you know, you, you're con- I mean, did that guy ever have to fuck? Like, the, the DNC, I mean, the RNC and that Duck Dynasty guy, you think Donald Trump, if you weren't some fucking reality show, whatever the fuck you are, man, <laughs> you think Donald Trump, we're paid one iota of attention to you. Come on, man. Just come on. Be serious. Come on, please. Please. You know, you got paid to go up there and, and do your thing and, and and more power to you. But come on. You really believe that in the, your heart of hearts? Do you believe that shit? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, so how was your weekend? Did you guys have fun? Did you do anything? Did you, I don't know, play golf? <laughs> play softball? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know what I did? I went and got myself another tattoo, babies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did the um, the good old uh, Brooklyn experience there. Um, got my ass down to, uh, is that it's Bensonhurst Bay Ridge? Well, I got to do that. Uh, 6217 16th Avenue in Brooklyn. Uh, those from Brooklyn, I might recognize that area. It's right near where the good old Lamours, the rock capital of Brooklyn used to be. If you were back there in the old days and saw some great bands there, Metallica would play in that little club. Uh, uh, everybody, the whole world, Kiss even played there. Uh, I don't know. Everybody, everybody. So anyway. Right near there where uh, that used to be and the ever-changing landscape of, uh, of Brooklyn. And that area of Brooklyn has always, always been aesthetically challenged. <laughs> like there's a house here, then there's a building, and then, I don't know, there's a synagogue, and then there's a Chinese re- I don't know, it's all uh, uh, just amazing, amazing, amazing. But anyway, uh, went down there and uh, hung out, you know, uh, just uh, – and when you go – uh, I, I, and I'm almost on every occasion when you go down to uh, visit designs by Michelangelo in Brooklyn. Uh, there's usually a lot of characters out there. So I like to get there early, you know, and just make sure that I've secured my spot in line. 
and you know, hung out. Luckily, it was it was a hot day, but a, a very gorgeous day. And I hung out there, and luckily, uh, Michael uh, from designs from my uh, design <laughs> designs by Michelangelo, uh, Michelangelo Perfetto, whatever. Anyway, oh, you know, I've been going to this guy since I was 22 years old, getting tattooed. Hung out. Uh, luckily, uh, he showed up early and, uh, yeah, uh, had a nice conversation. And that's kind of part of the whole uh, thing, and especially getting tattooed by someone you know for a long time who does really great work um, and having that, uh, that, that discourse, you know. And uh, it, it was a very uh, Brooklyn-style discourse, you know, and, and uh, laden with uh, motherfuckers and fuckers, <laughs> which I love. I love, you know, when people talk like that. That's how, they, you know. You two guys in a tattoo parlor. Let's let's talk like men. <laughs> but it was uh, it was good. It was a little tattoo talk, of course. Uh, you know, uh, my love for tattoos and the history of tattoos. And my mom constantly tell me, "Don't get any more tattoos." I go, "Mom, I'm fifty years old. You think it's gonna stop now?" <laughs> I've been getting tattooed for the last twenty nine years, on and off. You know, um, twenty nine years. Right? Every day, I got a ta- one little tattoo. Oh, I got tattooed. <laughs> <laughs> 29 years in a row. No, that did not happen. But anyway, uh, the conversation, of course, well, the tattoo I got uh, was uh, a flash design from uh, the famous Zeke Owen. Uh, those who are uh, 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 attuned to the tattoo world will recognize the name. And um, another name you might recognize is Jonathan Shaw. So Jonathan Shaw put out a book of his uh, part of his collection of uh, his flash sheets, uh, vintage ones, you know, antique ones, all this kind of stuff. And a pretty neat book. I'll put a link there on brooklyntelly.com. You can hit up the Amazon. And if you like the book, hey, listen, you help out the podcast. You can order it. You know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You can check it out. And there's some cool designs on there. Pretty awesome. And uh, the design I picked out, the Zeke Owen, uh, don't laugh. It's a, a really, really well done kind of pinup style of a mermaid uh, getting uh, – Possibly her buns bitten off. <laughs> buns. Her buns. <laughs> By a tiger shark. Very well laid out little image there. Fun, you know. And I found a perfect spot there uh, on, on a motif that I have going on. <laughs> what am I? I got a motif going on. Tattoos. What's wrong with you, <laughs> A motif. A mo- I gotta, did I use that right? But anyway, uh, so the conversation, of course, went to sharks and fishing and Mr. Perfetto uh, loves fishing. He has a boat, this stuff, blah, blah, blah. And we were reminiscing about all the stories. And, and me, I kind of got fished out at an early age by my dad. And it was constant. It was fish, 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 fish. <laughs> For a long time there. And I still love eating fish. And, and I, I kind of got, I don't know, a, a, a kind of a gross feeling after a while of going fishing early in the morning, the bay, you know, the, the, the slaughter of little fishies. I don't know. <laughs> but it, it was a it was a good thing exchanging the old stories, and it kind of made me nostalgic for that whole fishing thing again. And blah blah blah. And I guess when you're an old man, uh, after rebelling for something, go, hey, you know what? The, the, some of that stuff my dad did was pretty cool. <laughs> but anyway, uh, it was a fun time there, talking fishing stories, shark stories, uh, massage stories, falling in the water stories, all kinds of stuff we talked about there. And I had a great time, and I I bid Mister. Uh, Mr. Perfetto would do. So uh, I guess there's a little plug for him. Uh, if you're in the New York, Brooklyn area, whatever, you can hit him up on Instagram. <clears throat> it's Designs by Michelangelo. Just do a Google search. Uh, and uh, if you want the address, it's 62, uh, 60, yeah, 6217 16th Avenue uh, in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah. But anyway, uh, from there, you know, I went off into. Uh, the good old, you know, I took the good old subway, you know, and you land in uh, Coney Island. I have to take the train to Coney Island to get where my mom lives. And Coney Island is a buzz, baby. <laughs> I don't know. You like you go through this whole thing and, and you know, the, the media puts all this shit in your head. And like I said, the best news is probably put down your phone, shut your TV and go in the corner and meditate for an hour or do something. Clear your mind of this shit. But it's a conglomeration of every kind of person, every fucking body. <laughs> Did I feel safe? I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't fearing for my life. I just was fearing like, holy smokes, what if I can't get home, mama? No. (laughs) 
there was no fear involved. You know, it's congested, this and that, walking through. But everything, I, every every uh, I don't know. I saw so many shades of skin, <laughs> a million different languages, a million different costumes. I don't know what the fuck's going on. But it's Brooklyn, all right? Better or for worse. I know, I know. At one time, Coney Island was a, a certain demographic. <laughs> But that's okay, ladies and gentlemen. That's okay. Things are changing. But uh, I don't know the the, the melting pot. The, it's you know whatever. Anyway, so we got through all that, you know, and and um, got to good old mom's house and whatever. You know, visiting with mom and mom is uh, was at a at, at a a low a, a low simmer. Okay, <laughs> and that was good. And you know. I don't know what your mom likes to watch in this and that, but uh, normally my mom likes to lot of, watch a lot of uh, novellas. And you know what those are, right? Novella. <laughs> so the Spanish soap operas. And the soap operas, they're, they're, they're always on 10. Like the, the imagery, the insanity of it. And any American soap opera d- doesn't even compare to the ones on the Spanish channel. Everybody's plastic surgery done up to the hilt. So makeup, like I don't even know. <laughs> Hair up to here, boobs out to there, butt up to there. And I don't know, and everybody's like, da da da, he's cheating on her. You know, that's the, the same gamut. But guess what? It was Saturday. I was like, oh, yeah, it's not novella night. Mind you, there's no novellas tonight, stupid. <laughs> and we go right into my mom's second favorite violent <laughs> action movies and stuff. I don't know, she was watching some crazy movie and I was having something to eat and I was like, whatever. Then we rolled right into uh, 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 an encore presentation of Spartacus with blood everywhere. My mom's like, ah! <laughs> just, in, just insane, insane. Then all of a sudden, I'm like dozing off, I'm dying. I'm like, oh, mom, I'm going to crash on your couch here and I want to go take a walk on the beach in the morning, you know, by, you know doing the, the good old uh, Brooklyn Teddy experience there <laughs> in Brighton Beach, Coney Island, you know, from once I dredged from the ocean, I crawled out. No, that's not true. That's not true at all. But anyway, uh, I'm dozing off. She starts watching this other movie, Sinister 2. Sinister 2. <laughs> I got I to gotta just check out Sinister 1 because Sinister 2 is so horrible. That day, was it Sinister 1? I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. And it was some creepy movie with some ghost kids playing, taking other kids and putting them in the basement and making them look at these movies that they created where they killed their parents. And it was the spookiest fucked up shit. I was like, Ma, this is what you, we're going to watch right before they go to bed? She goes, what, are you afraid? <laughs> I'm not afraid, but this is kind of terrifying. <laughs> anyway, the movie ended in some horror, like nothing happened. Like, what? 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 And I don't know. Uh, so I was there chilling out for a while, you know, went and crashed out. Now, have you ever tried to sleep on a leather couch <laughs> with sheets on it? I don't know. I kept slipping off. <laughs> I was like, hold on. I kept dreaming. I was I'm climbing a mountain and kept slipping off. And I don't know. I was like, ah, what's going on? But finally made it through, made it through the night. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I, you know, I don't know how much, how familiar you are with Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach, little Odessa by the sea. Little Odessa, I've talked about it on the podcast before, and it's kind of where I grew up. It was a little Odessa back then. Like I said, it was, you know, like I, I talked about it in the last podcast, the demographic of uh, who was there, and what was there, and whatever. But now it's, uh, it's, it's totally, totally Russian and Eastern European. There are pockets of, of, of Middle, Middle Eastern people and pocket, pockets of Asians, and I don't know. It's a, a huge, 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 huge. And what's going on? Hold on a second. <laughs> Oh, I'm back. I'm back. Uh, well, welcome to reality. Uh, what happened was my my alarm went off <laughs> in the background there, so I'm gonna have to get the family up. I don't know if they set an alarm, but I'm gonna have to set. So yeah, the, the the my alarm went off, and I was like, "What's going on? I never do podcasts this early." <laughs> ah, ah, fear, fear. Oh, Christy's coming. Ah, he's gonna eat me. No, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. Just just freaked out. So anyway, um. So yeah, every conglomeration, whatever, and uh, uh, I hit my my old neighborhood where I used to live, uh, Sheepshead Bay, good old Sheepshead Bay, and there is an awesome uh, Turkish uh, eatery there uh, with my favorite dish, which I can't eat all the time, but when I go to Sheepshead Bay, I go near my, I try to hit it up because I can't get that food where I live right now, and like I said, a conglomeration of it, I go there, there's a a, a, a beautiful girl with a 
like, oh my God, what is it? A hijab? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, the headscarf. I'm for, I'm sorry. I just screwed it all up. But you know, and she's beautiful and I'm ordering my food and my Turkish buddy behind the thing and you know, boom, he gives me the extra pepper or whatever. And then I go visit uh, the old liquor store where I used to go to all the time and and those people are very sweet and they're in, I don't know, and they're from wherever in some Europe and they're very, you know, Jewish and very nice. And I don't know, it was just a great experience. All these people. And then you turn on the TV and everything, everybody's trying to kill you. <laughs> Let's build a wall. Ah, I don't know. Anyway. Anyway, so uh, I don't know. I don't know. My aspect and, and my upbringing in, uh, in Brooklyn, other people might have different things. Back then, it, it was a very segregated time there. I don't know. I, growing up in Brooklyn, I feel like I, I got a little bit of every fucking nationality in the world somehow permeated my, my, my being somehow. I don't know. I don't know what I just said. But once, once there was a gentleman that I was, uh, I was working in a store and some kind of uh, dissent, and I could read the – and I did the uh, – and the guy was like, where are you from? And I go, I'm from Brooklyn, man. <laughs> I can do an Italian accent. You know, I can do, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah, so that was my experience. So, whatever. And, uh, you know, went, went over to mom's and I told you that whole thing already. And then got up in the morning bright and early. You know, I got I to gotta, I gotta go see the ocean, man. I grew up near the fucking ocean. And even though some people say, oh, Brian Beach is this, is that, you know, that, whatever. Anyway, so. It's still, a, still an experience. So I walked out there, and, and first thing I see is a huge conglomeration of people in, in all kinds of African garb, and it's Sunday morning, and they're doing some kind of African baptism thing. I don't know. <laughs> that was amazing. Whatever, they're doing their thing, and people are just walking. Some people are doing yoga and stretching and I don't know what, and this guy's having a conversation, and there's a dude over there doing push-ups. I don't know, there's a couple of guys playing chess. I don't know. I saw everything. <laughs> Take a trip down there. Take a trip. Take that little trip from go to get off it, get off it back. Go go to Mike Profeto, get a tattoo, go to Coney Island, go get you'll see the whole the whole earth. I think I saw every type of I don't know what, but wow. Wow. Great experience. Walk down, and then I walk down. So walk down all the way to the other bay at the end of the end of the boardwalk, end of the end of the beach. There, sorry, Bob, I'm getting excited. I don't know. Um, and another bab. I don't know. It, I don't know. To me, it was it was very surreal. And there was people taking pictures. Nobody's getting mad. Everybody's just fucking hanging out, exercising, baptizing. I don't know everything. There was tents. I don't know. And made my way through that. Hung out a little bit. Uh, didn't jump in the water because guess what? I got a nice fresh tattoo. You can't go in the water with a nice fresh tattoo. You'll fuck it up. So, you know, I waited in a little bit, you know, put a little water. Uh, I, I baptized myself with <laughs> the water a little bit. I don't know. Uh, I looked around and gathered my shit and had a great time in uh, good old Brooklyn. I don't know. Yeah, Brooklyn Teddy Podcast. Guess that's why it's fucking called that, you schmagazy. <laughs> Uh, so that that was pretty awesome so yeah if you want to i don't know i guess it was a great way to just uh detach you know and since i've been doing the brooklyn teddy podcast of course i have to be somehow in the news cycle and you know breathing this stuff and reading it and going through the disasters and feeling the, and, I, and it, it takes a toll on your soul man it takes a toll on your soul uh so if you have a chance just break away just break away Break away from the nonsense. Break away from your phone. Break away from your Twitter for just a little while, okay? You'll feel so much better. But before you do that, ladies and gentlemen, head on over to BrooklynTeddy.com. Yes, yes, yes. It's the companion website to the Brooklyn Teddy Podcast. And there you can, guess what? Help support the podcast, dudes. Come on, come on. I need to download any of you listening. Hey, you guys in France, I know you can't do that Amazon thing, but hit me up on iTunes. Do something. I'm some number what? Some listing there? I don't know. In France. Oh, I look at France. All horrible stuff going there, too. I don't know, man. I don't know. More horrible stuff happened there. But anyway, BrooklynTeddy.com. Listen, let's cheer up. Have a little fun. Head on to BrooklynTeddy.com. I'll put some silly videos there. You can laugh along, listen to my nonsense. I don't know. Am I going crazy right before your steaming ears, ladies and gentlemen? Probably. (laughs) 
but I'm, at least I'm having fun doing it. Uh, so yeah, BrooklynTelly.com. If you want, if you don't want to go there, just uh, you can go to Spreaker. That's the podcast is there. iTunes, uh, Twitter. I said Brooklyn Teddy thirteen on Twitter, and all that cool stuff. Okay, so I had it. You know, just go over there. You know, come on, come on. You know, give me a little more action there. I'm seeing some, but I'm not seeing enough. You know, and I love you guys. I love you guys. So. I, I, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna end the podcast, and this is for uh, the I guess this is uh, the Cuban heritage <laughs> moment, uh, the Brooklyn Teddy podcast. And yes, my family came from Cuba uh, back back in the day, uh, separate but whatever. And so, but I'm I'm made I'm made in Brooklyn. All right, don't 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 get the wrong idea. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but anyway. Uh, my my one of my first introductions to comedy was through my dad uh, and a comedian, and I got, I think I was kind of getting you know of course I was watching SNL a little bit and uh, a, a Steve Martin fan you know I'm a wild and crazy guy and all that good stuff. Um, it, it was Alvarez Alvarez Jerez Alvarez Jerez, uh, and I remember my dad playing the record, and to this day I remember some of the jokes. Okay. Y te puedo hablar español porque este es el podcast de Brooklyn Teddy. Uh, so I'm going to put a little excerpt, the excerpt of uh, some of the bits there from Alvaro uh first, uh, uh, I guess, comedy album. I guess that's what it was, a comedy album there. You know, hey, he had his first comedy album. Um, and some silly stuff there that I still remember. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I leave you. Until next time, this is Brooklyn Teddy for the Brooklyn Teddy Podcast. I love you all. Hay un tipo esperando el tren en Chicago y está matando el tiempo, no tiene nada que hacer. Y hay una, una pesa y dice su edad, su personalidad, por solo cinco centavos. Saca cinco centavos, se para en la pesa, echa los cinco centavos y sale una tarjeta. Y si usted se llama José González, tiene 32 años, es casado, tiene dos hijos, es ingeniero mecánico. Y está esperando el tren de las cuatro y media para Nueva York. El hombre se queda frío. ¿Qué es esto? Se va de ahí. Se va a un lugar que está cerca que dice, compra un sombrero. Se pone el sombrero. Bien. Echa el nique de nuevo. Y se da una tarjeta. Si usted se llama José González, tiene 32 años. Es casado. Tiene dos hijos. Es ingeniero mecánico. Y está esperando el tren de las cuatro y media para Nueva York. No puede ser, porque cosa es esto. Sale otra vez, va una que en calle, se compra un par de pueblos negros, coge el sombrero, le vira el ala para abajo, llega, echa un nique, sale una tarjeta. Usted se llama José González, tiene 32 años, es casado, tiene dos hijos, es ingeniero mecánico y está esperando el tren de las cuatro y media para nueve. Este tipo, no, 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 esto no puede ser. Busca hacer que hay una casa de disfraces, va a la casa de disfraces, se pone una peluca de una vieja par de pojuelos negros, una cartera, un vestido, llega, echa el nique y sale una tarjeta y dice, usted se llama José González, tiene 32 años, es casado, tiene dos hijos, es ingeniero mecánico y por estar comiendo mierda se fue el tren de las cuatro y media. Un tipo que llega el diablo y le dice, mira, la muerte te está buscando. Yo sé que tú eres una buena persona, que tú eres un hombre trabajador y honesto, pero lo único que te puedo decir es que la muerte te está buscando, escóndete, mira a ver lo que tú haces. El hombre va para la casa y le dice a la mujer vieja, me fue a ver el diablo y me dijo que la muerte me está buscando, que tú crees, dice yo. No, figúrate, por lo menos no puede ir, a, al trabajo no vaya. Él trabajaba en un banco, dice, no vaya al trabajo hoy. En lugar de ponerte cuello y corbata, ponte unos tenis sucios, un pantalón sucio, una camisa rota, y métete, por ejemplo, en un billar, que es un lugar donde tú nunca vas. Si la muerte te está buscando, te va a buscar en el banco, no te va a ir a buscar el billar. Y a ver qué podemos hacer, a lo mejor te salva. El tipo efectivamente se pone toda esa cosa, pero además de eso, se pela, rape, se quita todo el pelo... Y se mete en un billar desde tempranito, desde por la mañana. Se pasa todo el día en el billar. 
por la mañana, a la tarde, la noche, y a las 3 menos 5 de la mañana está sentado en su vida con su coco pelado ahí, sentado, y llega la muerte. 3 menos 5 de la mañana, se para en la puerta del billar, mira, mira para el reloj, dice, si a las 3 no aparece el bancario y me voy a llevar a rapaz ese que está sentado. <risa> Hay un cubano en Miami que dice que iba a Italia y va a la barbería y se sienta en la barbería y cuando el barbero viene, el barbero cubano también, que si va cubano le dice, espérame bien mi mano que voy a, voy a Europa. Se le va a ver a Europa. ¿Ya qué país de Europa va? ¿De tipo a Italia? Dice, ¿a Italia? ¿Ya qué vas a ir a Italia? Che? ¿Te vas a ir de aquí de mi país de Italia a gastar dinero por gusto para qué? Che? Dice, no, por gusto no, hermano. Y me he pasado toda mi vida planeando este viaje. Y, y tengo mucho de saber Italia. No venga tú ahora a desilusionarme ni a quitarme la idea. O... Dice, ¿y qué es lo que te llama la atención de Italia? Dice, bueno, principalmente el Vaticano. O sea, yo soy muy religioso. Y primero quiero ir al Vaticano, ver la Capilla Sistina, visitar al Papa. Bueno, todo lo que te da la gana, pero yo fui a Italia, mi hermano. Yo te digo a ti que las mujeres italianas son unos pencos y los italianos son unos tipos muy pesados. Y si va al Vaticano no va a poder ver al Papa. ¿Tú crees que va a ver al Papa? No va a ver al Papa y además la Capilla Sistina está cerrada. Y te lo digo yo que estuve ahí, no es... Bueno, mi hermano, déjame. Yo me he pasado muchos años en este problema y muchos años queriendo ir al... Al Vaticano y queriendo ir a Italia, así que no venga tú ahora a desgraciarme mi vieja. Pélame y termine de pelarme y no me... Bueno, yo te pelo, pero ahora yo te advierto que no la vas a pasar bien. Pasó aquello, el hombre se fue para Europa, para Italia, a los dos meses regresa y a los dos meses regresa, va a la, a la misma barbería. El barbero lo empieza a pelar y cuando lo está pelando dice, venga cacho. Tú no eres uno que estuvo aquí hace poco que me dijo que iba a Italia, que iba al Vaticano, o sea, que sí, sí, yo mismo... Dice, ¿y cómo te fue? Dice, pues chicos de maravilla, tú me dijiste que los italianos eran muy pesados, que las italianas eran unos pencos, que yo no iba a poder ver al Papa, que la capilla Sistina iba a estar cerrada. Mira, fui a Italia y las mujeres italianas son una maravilla. Los hombres italianos son unos caballeros, atentos, simpáticos. Fui al Vaticano, me dieron la cita con el Papa, vi al Papa. Cuando me arrodillé que le fui a besar el anillo al Papa, que bajé la cabeza así, ¿Tú no sabes lo que me dijo? ¿Por qué te dijo? Ve a ¿quién fue el hijo de puta que te peló a ti, Miami? <risa> un tipo muy mal hablado, que estaba de visita en una casa. Y entonces, pues, le insistieron que hiciera un, un cuento de cuando él iba a los safaris, al África. Y el amigo que sabía que él era mal hablado decía, no, 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 dejen eso, dejen eso. ¿Para qué? Si de todas maneras dice... No, pero que, ¿por qué no nos cuenta cuando él... Porque ha ido tantas veces al África, dicen que fue muchas veces al África, a los safaris. ¿Por qué no nos cuenta? Y el amigo no quería. Hasta que al fin... Le dice, oye, mira a ver si... Haz el cuento, pero... Pero bueno, no decir malas palabras ni nada de eso. Digo, no, ¿por qué voy a decir malas palabras? Yo, yo digo la verdad, lo que yo... Dice, una vez yo estaba persiguiendo un león tuerto que estaba asolando a una, una comarca, por ahí había matado como a 28 nativos. Y fuimos un amigo mío y yo a tratar de capturar al león. Y nos pasamos cuatro días sin dormir persiguiendo al león. Y cuatro días sin dormir, y ustedes saben lo que significa. Ya el quinto día estaba yo vencido por el sueño, ya me estaba quedando dormido. Y siento un movimiento, así, las ramas que se movieron, y cuando abro los ojos, me he ido dormido, veo el león, efectivamente el león tuerto, el mismo que me habían dicho. Me le tiro el rifle y el león me parte para arriba y me hace. ¡Aaah! Me cagué. <risa> Silencio absoluto, nadie decía nada. Una situación embarazosa. Hasta sale una de las la señoras que estaba allí en el par y para tirarle un. Un cabo al hombre dice, bueno, en una situación como esa, eso le pasa a cualquiera. Dice el tipo, no, 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 no,